Good morning, and welcome to Con good morning, and welcome to Concordia Lutheran Church's virtual worship. It's good to be together as we celebrate God's love and grace. It's good to, good for me to be back this Sunday. Uh, as you, most of you know, I had COVID this past week, so we didn't have worship last week. And there's actually, well, no, not nobody, but nobody's really here. We don't have in-person worship today. I'm feeling uh, much better, so thank you for everybody who uh, prayed for us, prayed for me. I'm still not 100%, but we're here, so that's all good. I hope if you're watching at home that you're going to sing along and read along, and we will have communion, so if you want to have some wine or grape juice and bread for that part of our service together, that would be great. We begin with a reading of Psalm 138, which we'll read in unison. I will give thanks to you, O Lord, with my whole heart. Before the gods, I will sing your praise. I will bow down toward your holy temple and praise your name because of your steadfast love and faithfulness. For you have glorified your name and your word above all things. When I called, you answered me. You increased my strength within me. All the rulers of the earth will praise you, O Lord. When they had heard the words of your mouth, they will sing of the ways of the Lord, that great is the glory of the Lord. The Lord is high, yet cares for the lowly, perceiving the haughty from afar. Though I walk in the midst of trouble, you keep me safe. You stretch forth your hand against the fury of my enemies. Your right hand shall save me. You will make good your purpose for me. O oh Lord, your steadfast love endures forever. Do not abandon the works of your hands. This morning, the psalmist asked God to make good the purpose in us, that God's steadfast love will show us the way, that God's steadfast love will help us to see our lives as part of God's loving plan, that we will be given strength through our faith in God, and as I was quarantining this week with COVID, I was thinking about how God's grace and love have been so important to get us through this time. I've talked many times in the past two years, but it needs to be repeated over and over. It is through our faith in God's steadfast love that we get through the difficulties of our life. It's through God's grace that we see past our sins, past our shame, and into the future that God has prepared for us. Because in this world, we constantly face difficulties. We face so many obstacles, and maybe the worst of all the obstacles is ourselves. We come to believe the worst of ourselves. And I want you to know this morning that God sees what others don't. God sees maybe even what you don't. Because we are told in scripture that God does not see as human sees. Thank God for that. Because we need God to come and to tell us not to be afraid. We need God to remind us that we all have worth and that we're made for greater things than we can imagine. That's what we'll be talking about in our sermon this morning. I'd like to thank Paul for being here to sing and Janet for being here to play. And we begin with our gathering song, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord God Almighty, number 413. like Lord. 
The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all and also with you. Let us pray. Living God in Christ, you make all things new. Transform the poverty of our nature by the riches of your grace. And in the renewal of our lives, make known your glory through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Our gospel for this morning comes to us from the gospel of St. Luke, the fifth chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Once while Jesus was standing beside the lake of Gennesaret and the crowd was pressing in on him to hear the word of God, he saw two boats there at the shore of the lake. The fishermen had got out of them and were washing their nets. He got into one of the boats, the one belonging to Simon, and asked him to put it out a little way from the shore. Then he sat down and taught the crowds from the boat. When he had finished speaking, he said to Simon, put out the, it into the deep water and let down your nets for a catch. Simon answered, Master, we have worked all night long, but have caught nothing. Yet if you say so, I will let down the nets. When they had done this, they caught so many fish that their nets were beginning to break. So they signaled their partners in the other boat to come and help them. And they came and filled both boats so that they began to sink. But when Simon Peter saw it, he fell down at Jesus and he saying, Go away from me, Lord, for I am a sinful man. For he and all who were with him were amazed at the catch of fish that they had taken. And so were also James and John, sons of Zebedee. From now on, sons of Zebedee, who were partners with Simon. Then Jesus said to Simon, do not be afraid. From now on, you will be catching people. When they had brought their boats ashore, they left everything and followed him. The gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord. O Christ. Let us pray. Dear Lord, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in thy sight. Amen. Have you ever wondered why Jesus chose Peter to be his disciple? And not really just his only disciple, but one of the most important disciples. I actually think it every time I read the Gospels, because Peter always seems to fail the test. Peter never seems to get it right. He's eager to please, but, and he wants to do the right thing, but he actually never does. He's too quick to talk. He doesn't listen carefully. Peter often puts his foot in his mouth. Oftentimes, he's way too cocky and at the same time, lacks the faith to actually carry out a task. Shouldn't go unmentioned that Peter was also a fisherman, and fishermen were not the best and brightest people. Today's gospel lesson is a great example. Peter, after fishing all night, all day, doesn't believe that there are fish to be found in the lake of Gennesaret. He's probably tired, ready to go home at the end of the day, ready to move on. But he's also inspired, I would assume, by the teachings of Jesus. He is ready for something to be done great. And even he has heard all, all the things that Jesus has to teach, even after he's heard all the stories of the miracles that Jesus has done in other places, Peter doesn't believe Jesus. He lacks faith. Why would you pick such a person to be your disciple? What is amazing to me this time when I read this story for this morning is Jesus' response to Peter's lack of faith. Jesus doesn't condemn Peter for it. Jesus doesn't tell Peter all the ways that he's not fit to be a disciple. 
Jesus doesn't shame Peter. Instead, Jesus offers words of comfort. Jesus tells Peter not to be afraid and that he will do greater things than this. This is not often, by the way, how our world works, is it? We live in a world still to this day of shame and blame. We live in a world where people don't actually see each other. We see what's on the surface. We judge each other. We judge ourselves. I think that most people walk around feeling inadequate about the tasks that they have been called to do. We don't feel like we measure up. We don't feel like we're good enough. Now, some people, they hide behind the facade of money and power or bravado. Some people, you know, pump themselves up. But every person that I've ever met feels like they're not good enough in some way. I wonder this morning if we can see ourselves as God sees us. Because God sees through all of us. God sees our hearts. God sees not what we are, but rather what we could be. God sees what we are meant to be. If only we don't live in fear. If only we didn't live in shame. If only we knew how great we really are. We could not only fish, but we could fish for people. We could love and care about others. We could show grace to others. We could heal and be healers. Actually, this is a very common theme in the Bible. God always picks the least likely person. God picks Moses to lead his people, even though Moses is a stutterer and a murderer. God picks David, who's the runt of his family. God picks Abraham, who has no heirs and no great wealth. God picks Jacob, who's a scammer and a liar. God picks the prophet Jeremiah, who is much too young. And God picks Paul, who is a persecutor of Jesus' people. And here's the amazing thing this morning that I want you to hear me say. God has chosen you. Now, I don't know about you, but that is often hard for me to believe. I mean, I don't often believe that God wants me to stand up here every week and tell you God's word. After all, who am I? And and let me tell you who I am. I am nobody. People tend to put their pastors on a pedestal, but let me give you some advice. Don't ever. Because I'm just as sinful and broken as you are. I'm just as faithless as Peter. I don't believe there's any fish in this lake either. But here comes Jesus. Tells me not to fear. Tells me that I'm called to do this and I am made for this. That's grace. That is what God does for us. God sees our broken places and God doesn't use that to shame us. God uses it to have us fish for people. God uses us to have us love more and show grace to others. I read this book called I Like My Coffee Black by Tyler Merritt. I read it for the Calumet Book Club that I get to co-lead. And Tyler was actually gracious enough to join our book club twice in the past two weeks to talk about the book. And I, I love this book. It was just a wonderful joy to read. It was funny. It was informative. It was emotional. It was inspiring. Anyway, Tyler is a very vulnerable in the book with his own brokenness. He tells a story of a sexual indiscretion he had and how the church he was working for at the time fired him because of it. In his words, he was, quote, broken beyond repair, hopeless and unlovable, worthless, believing that all he had built was a farce, unquote. Doesn't that sound like Peter this morning? Doesn't that sound like the voice in your head that tries to tell you that every day? Anyway, Tyler then talked to his mother And he confessed to his mother everything that he had done and everything that had happened. And his mother told him this, quote, everybody makes mistakes. This is not your first, and hear me, son, it will not be your last. You are my child. You are still the boy I raised, and I will not sit here and let the people from your church define my son. Do not believe those lies, unquote. He wrote about how a lot of other people loved him during this time. And he wrote, it feels a lot like being loved by God, I would imagine. I don't want to sound corny this morning, but that kind of love, that kind of grace is life-giving. It is life-saving. I know because it saved my life. My mom's love and God's love saved my life. People in my life who saw beyond my sins, beyond my faithlessness, 
people who told me not to be afraid because God has something else in store for me. Those people were God sent. And that is the message that Peter, that Jesus gives to Peter this morning. It is the message that God gives to all of you. I hope you have those people in your life too. I hope you hear Jesus this morning telling you not to be afraid. Jesus telling you that you are meant for greater things. That indeed love and grace will save you and the rest of the world. I hope like Peter you hear those words and believe them. So that you too will follow Jesus and fish for people. Amen. Our hymn of the day today is You Have Come Down to the Lake Shore, number 817. other waters, you the longing of souls that are yearning, O oh, loving friend, you have come to call me, sweet Lord, you have looked into my eyes, kindly smiling, you've called out my name. And I have abandoned my small boat. Now with you I will seek other seas. Having heard the good news, let us confess our common faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father. 
and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Spirit of the Lord is poured out upon us in abundance, so we are bold to pray for the church, the world, and all that God has made. Blessed are those whose trust is in you. Strengthen the faith of those who profess your name and bring reassurance to those who doubt or fear. Through your church, speak continually blessing into the world. God of grace. Those who trust in you are like trees planted by streams of water. Bless fruit trees with an abundant harvest. Protect rainforests from destruction. Restore land that has eroded after deforestation. Resurrect woodlands after forest fires. God of grace. Search the hearts of those who govern, that they lead with humility, inspire leaders to collaborate on policies that protect people and the planet, sustain truth-tellers and social movements that challenge society to become more honest and just. God of grace. Send your blessings of mercy upon those who long for consolation. Tend to those who struggle with poverty, unemployment, or uncertainty. Provide for all who are hungry, console those who face persecution, and grant peace to all who suffer. We especially pray this morning for Rosa, Ernest, Elaine, Eric, Mike, Catherine, Joanne, Robert, Bud, Doris, Darren, Gail, Carolyn, Marie, Steve, Larry, Beverly, Roland, Tara, Deb, John, Laura, Michael, Kathy, Ann, Alva, Gretchen, Karen, Kathy, Valerie, Florence, Teresa, Vicki, Gail, Ernie, Gethsemane Lutheran Church, Carol, John, Mike, Helen, Barbara, and Bill, and Liesel. We pray for those who grieve, the family and friends of Carolyn, Liz, Jim, Joel, Ken, Christina, Carol, Karen, Keegan, Todd, Dean, Betsy, Joe, Kathleen, Paul, Judy, Grace, Eric, we pray for our homebound Betty Lee and Florence and our men and women in the service, Isaac, Gus, Daniel, and Joshua. God of grace, renew this congregation and our shared mission. As we plan and dream for the future you are preparing, inspire us by the examples of Martin Luther and all the reformers. Bless new projects and new ministry partnerships. God of grace. Christ is raised from the dead, and so we cling to the hope of the resurrection. We praise you for the lives of the saints who lived and died in the hope of eternal life with you. God of grace. Here our own prayers may be offered aloud or in our hearts. Since we have such great hope in your promises, O oh God, we lift these and all our prayers to you in confidence and faith through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Lift your hands to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should all times and all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior, Jesus Christ. By the leading of a star, he was shown forth to all nations in the waters of the Jordan. You proclaimed him your beloved son. In the miracle of water turned to wine, he revealed your glory. So with all the church of, of, of angels and the church on earth and the host of heaven, we praise your name and join the rendering hymn which we say together now, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord. God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy One, the beginning and the end, the giver of life. Blessed are you for the birth of creation. Blessed are you in the darkness and in the light. Blessed are you for your promise to your people. Blessed are you in the prophets' hopes and dreams. Blessed are you for Mary's openness to your will. 
Blessed are you for your son, the word made flesh. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Then again, after supper, he took the cup. And after giving thanks, he gave for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sins. Do this for the remembrance of me. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, now and forever. Amen. It is our teaching and our tradition that we do not celebrate at the Lutheran table, but we celebrate at the Lord's table. And the Lord invites everyone who is watching and everyone who is here to celebrate in this feast of God's mercy and God's grace. We now will sing our communion song. The body of Christ is given for you. The blood of Christ is shed for you.
Lord, you summons echoes true when you but call my name. Let me turn and follow you and never be the same. In your company I'll go, where your love and footsteps show. Thus I'll move and live and grow. And now may the body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Let us pray. We give you thanks, almighty God, that you have refreshed us through the healing power of this gift of life. In your mercy, strengthen us through this gift in faith toward you and in fervent love toward one another for the sake of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. God sees you. God sees the real you, the amazing, wonderful you, the you that is made to love and to be loved, the you that is meant to do amazing things in this world. I hope this morning you see it too. As Brennan Manning once said, define yourself radically as one beloved by God. This is the true self. Every other identity is illusion. Or somebody anonymous once said, when you see yourself as God sees you, it can change your entire perspective on life. Or Oscar Wilde, be yourself, everyone else is taken. Or Gabby Bernstein, the world just wants your authentic truth. I'll leave you this morning with the lyrics from the song, How Dare You Want More by the Bleachers. These steps of faith, I can't imagine it. Pack up my suitcase till I can't bear it. Who am I without this weight on my shoulder? Oh God, I'm dying to know, but how dare you want more? Preacher, preacher, calling from the floor, man of secrets, two lives that's been living in, stolen identity, stolen dreams. Who is he if he just go and tell it like it is? I'll bet he's dying to know, how dare you want more? Preacher, preacher, calling from the floor, these steps of faith so easy for her, but out of mind, out of sight, I'm trying to find out, can I see without all this carry and fear? Oh God, she's still my mother. She's still my wheel. Yeah, how dare you want more? And now God, who leads you in pathways of righteousness, who, bless, who rejoices over you and who calls you by name, bless your going out and your coming in today and forevermore. Amen. And our sending song this morning is number 876. Take their part. 
Just one announcement, and that is that there will be no Bible study tomorrow. I continue to test positive and still have some symptoms, so even though it's going to be day 11, just out of abundance and caution, I'll, we won't have an in-person Bible study tomorrow. I want to thank everybody for joining us this morning. I hope in our song, our readings, our prayers, and preaching that you know how much God loves and cares for you. Uh, if you'd like to give uh, electronically, you can do that through our PayPal account on our website. And I want to remind everybody that we are trying to make sure that we have, uh, we're trying to collect the most up-to-date information for our church directory. So if you think that the information might not be correct that's there now, or you changed your number or your email, or we don't have any of that, uh, on the Thursday email blast, there's been a link to uh, fix that. So please, if you haven't done so already and you need to, please um, fill out that form for us. That would be uh, great so that we have everybody's correct information and we can stay in, in touch with you. And now, go with Christ into a weary world and share the good news. Thanks be to God.